This video is on how to field strip and clean the Sig Sauer P320. Now this video is meant for total beginners. By the way, if this is your first gun, you made a good choice. The P320 is an awesome weapon. I know everyone has their own way of doing things, including myself, so for training purposes, we're just going to go right along with Sig Sauer's recommendations in the owner's manual. I'm only going to add one small step, and that's the use of a boar snake. The Sig Sauer owner's manual doesn't mention anything about a boar snake, so let's get right into it. Before you get started, you'll need a few things. A cleaning rod, cleaning patches, or you can cut up a t-shirt, which is probably what I'm going to do today. A brass jag, a bore brush, make sure it says 357, 38, 9mm or 380. A patch holder, a nylon brush, a bore snake, and a cleaning rag of some sort. This is a microfiber rag. But just like cleaning patches, you can also use an old t-shirt. And you're going to need CLP. Don't worry too much about the brand right now. You'll figure out what you like and don't like later on. This bottle here is just a regular liquid CLP, but there are also a spray on CLP such as Hornady One Shot. And be sure that your bore snake and cleaning rod attachments are specific to your bore size. In this case, I'm using 9mm. Make sure your weapon is clear of all ammunition. Keep it pointed in a safe direction. Press the mag release button. Drop the magazine. Work the slide a few times. If there's any ammunition inside it, it's going to eject at this point. And visually and physically inspect the chamber and the magazine well. Okay, on the left side, this is your takedown lever, and this is your slide catch lever. Use your firing hand to hold the grip. Use your non-firing hand to pull the slide back. As the slide's all the way back, push the slide catch lever upward, and the slide will lock into position. Rotate the takedown lever downward until it gets to this position right here. Now pull the slide catch lever downward and guide the slide forward. Now sometimes it'll get caught up like right about here. If it does that, just give it a push with your thumb and it'll come right off. Remove the recoil spring guide by pushing the chamber in towards the muzzle end and it'll pop right off. Now just grab the barrel by the lug and pull it right out. Let's remove the fire control assembly. To do that, pull in the takedown lever, pop it out. Now grab onto these receiver rails and pull the fire control assembly upward and out. And that's as far as you need to go for field stripping. So here you have your grip module, your slide, your barrel, your fire control assembly, your takedown lever, your recoil spring guide, and your magazine. That's as far as you're going to break it down for a basic field strip and clean. Let's start cleaning the fire control assembly. Put CLP on your nylon brush and just start scrubbing it inside and out. Then wipe it down with your rag. After you've wiped it down, you can go through with fine detail with a cotton swab. Okay, one final inspection. And that looks good enough for me. Next, let's clean the barrel. Put CLP on your nylon brush. And start with the exterior. Cleaning the lug, the hood, all of the barrel, the feed ramp. Anything else I can see. Then wipe it down with a clean rag. Now take your brass bore brush and screw it onto your cleaning rod. Now make sure you're using the right caliber. It's going to either say 380, 9mm, 38, or in this case, 357. The calibers I just listed will all fit this 9mm barrel. Put a little CLP on your bore brush and push it through from chamber end to muzzle end. I only push the bore brush through in one direction, chamber in to muzzle in, because it doesn't make any sense at all to push the dirt out, then pull it right back in. That's the way you would clean a barrel of a high precision rifle, so why not clean your pistol the same way? It just takes a few extra seconds to remove the bore brush, pull the cleaning rod out, put the brush back on, and push it through again, one direction. And you may be thinking, I'll just leave the handle off and push the rod right on through so I can just remove the rod and start over again quickly. You don't want to do that because the rod handle allows the rod to spin freely. This allows the brush bristles to actually spin and clean within the rifling. This is a brass jag, once again, nine millimeter. This is a patch holder. 
you can feed a patch in it and clean the inside of the board with it, but I prefer the brass jag. I get better results from it. And the jag gives me a tighter seal between the cleaning patch and the inside of the bore. Attach the jag to the cleaning rod. Add CLP to your cleaning patch, or in this case, a cut up t-shirt. Put it on the end of the jag and push it through from chamber end to muzzle end. Now you'll see that the first patch comes out really dirty. Just keep pushing fresh patches through until they come out clean. This one's better, but not clean enough, so I'm going to keep going. I've cut most of it out for time's sake, but I've run about 10 patches through. Now that one's clean, so it's time to move on. Now this is the extra step I mentioned at the beginning of the video that's not in the Sig Sauer owner's manual. That's the use of a bore snake. If you take a look at the weight at the end of the bore snake, you'll see that the weight says 9mm on it. Take the weighted end and feed it through your barrel from chamber end to muzzle end. Do this a few times and it cleans your barrel out really well. You want to leave the bore dry. You don't want to leave any excess CLP inside it. So the bore snake does a great job at removing anything that you don't want inside the barrel. When you're done with the bore snake, take a look. I can see that the rifling is perfect and it looks like black glass inside. Apply CLP to your brush and start going through the slide. Clean all visible surfaces and make sure you don't get any excess CLP into this area here. That's your striker channel. You want to clean the breech face well, but you don't need to get CLP down into it. That's the channel for the firing pin. Give special attention to the frame rail slots. Also make sure the extractor is free of dirt and residue. Make sure it's totally clean. That's that little hook device you see there next to the breech face. Now clean the exterior and just make sure you're always using a soft nylon brush. You don't want to use anything that may scratch it. And that goes for all my gun cleaning equipment. I don't use anything that might ever have a chance of scratching my gun. Now once you've loosened up all the fouling and dirt, go through it with a clean swab. Go through the rails first. You'll see that the Q-tips come out dirty, just like that. Keep repeating the process. Eventually they'll come out clean. Now once the swabs start coming out clean, add CLP to a fresh swab and lubricate the rails. I also leave a light coat of CLP on anything that shows metal on metal wear. Now I'm just going to go through with a clean rag and wipe off any excess CLP that I don't want. Okay, now let's take a look. Yep, looks pretty good. Let's move on to the frame. By the way, this is a Wilson Combat frame. Add CLP to your nylon brush and scrub all visible surfaces, especially up front towards the muzzle end. There'll be a lot of carbon buildup right there by the rails. After you've brushed out the inside of the magazine well, I found that the easiest way to wipe it clean is just feed a clean rag through it. Wipe off any excess CLP from the grip module. Best way to get inside the stippling is just wrap the clean rag around it and squeeze. Now clean the takedown lever with your nylon brush and CLP. Wipe it off and you're done with that part. Now let's clean the recoil assembly. Add CLP to your brush and just go through it. Now wipe it off with a rag and you're done with this part. Now let's clean the magazine. Now for the magazine, you don't need to disassemble it every time you shoot it. If you've dropped it in dirt or sand or something like that, or it's just been a long time since you've cleaned it, sure, go ahead and break it down and give it a good thorough cleaning. If you do decide to do that, just press that little button at the bottom of the base plate. It's easy if you use a punch or a similar tool. As you're holding the button down, slide the floor plate off. It's under spring tension, so once you get everything out, it's going to look like this. 
This is actually a page from the owner's manual. But today it's just not necessary to disassemble this magazine. I'm just going to give it a basic clean. Add just a little CLP to your nylon brush because you don't want anything leaking down inside the magazine. Get in really well right there at the follower and along the edges of it. Once again, you don't want to leak any CLP into the magazine. There's plenty of holes where this CLP can leak into it if you're not careful. Once I've cleaned off all the loose dirt, I just go through and find detail with a cotton swab. Now wipe it off with a rag, and you're done with the magazine. So now we've field stripped and cleaned everything. We cleaned the magazine, the takedown lever, the fire control assembly, the barrel, the recoil spring guide assembly, the grip module, and the slide. Okay, let's reassemble. Reinstall the fire control assembly, put the trigger in first, and make sure these tabs go inside these slots on the grip module. To help get it lined up, it helps if you push back on these receiver rails. Just make sure these tabs line right up with these slots, just like that. I can also see that the fire control assembly is lined up correctly. When I look in this hole, I can see that it's going to be clear for the takedown lever to be reinserted. Now reinserting the takedown lever is a little tricky the first couple of times you do it, but you'll get it. Now you're going to see that it may not want to go in flush. It's going to be sticking out just a little bit, just like this. That's okay for now. We'll get that fixed once the slide's back on. Grab your barrel and reinstall it back into the slide. Make sure it locks up correctly. Now reinstall the recoil spring. Notice that this side goes to muzzle in, and this side here goes to chamber in, of course. When you push in the spring, make sure it's resting against the barrel load, just like that. Now line the receiver rails up with the slide rail slots and push it back into position. And sometimes you get stuck right about here. If you do, press that little piece down right there, press that down, make a C clamp, and continue pulling the slide back into position. Sometimes you don't need to do that little extra step. Sometimes the slide just goes right back into position with no hesitation. And to hold the slide back, just hold it back and press upward on the slide catch lever. Now here's where we're going to make that takedown lever flush. Now that the slide's on, just turn the takedown lever back into the normal position and you'll see that it's going to snap in place. Now it should be flush with a grip module and slide. Let's do a function check. Work the slide, pull the trigger, you're going to hear it click, but don't let it go. Keep holding the trigger, work the slide again, release the trigger, you're going to hear it click, pull it again, you'll hear it click again. If it does, you're good to go. Just to be thorough, let's make sure it locks back on an empty magazine. Insert an empty magazine, pull the slide back. It should lock back on its own. If it does, everything's good. Congratulations, you're done cleaning. Clean your weapon every time after you shoot. Even if you haven't shot it recently, if you've been carrying it, you're still going to want to clean it once in a while. It's going to pick up dirt, cotton, and lint, and just other stuff just from everyday use. If you're keeping it in storage, you're still going to want to check it every once in a while. The length of time is going to depend on your environment. If you're in a humid environment, you're going to want to check it more often and see if it needs any maintenance. That goes the same if you're in a very dry environment. You're still going to want to check it once in a while, see if it needs any lubrication. So take care of your weapon, and your weapon will take care of you should you need it. Get all the training you can with a weapon that you are specifically going to be carrying, and stay safe. If you like this video, buy something from us at SkullCrush.com.